Our topic today is gestational trophoblastic disease. Do you hear uh, me, my friends? Do you see presentation? Are there any problems? Yes, you do. Okay, okay. Uh, gestational trophoblastic disease. First of all, overview. What is GTD? GTD is heterogeneous group of related lesions arise from abnormal proliferation of trophoblast of the placenta. They can follow any gestational event, abortion, miscarriage, ectopic or normal pregnancy. They are unique because the maternal lesions arise from the fetal, not maternal, tissue. Most GTD lesions produce beta HCG. They can be cured even in the presence of widespread metastasis. High the tiriform mole, benign gestational trephoblastic disease. They could be complete or partial. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, malignant GTN, persistent or invasive mole, choriocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, PSTT. Last kind is epithelioid tumor. What about risk factors for gestational trophoblastic disease? There are common in such regions as Philippines, China, India, Japan, Indonesia, Africa, Central and Latin America. The incidence of GTD has remained fairly constant at approximately 1 to 2 percent, thousand deliveries per thousand deliveries in North America and Europe. Improved socioeconomic conditions and dietary changes may be partly responsible as well. That said, certain Asian population, as well as Hispanics and the Native Americans living in the United States, do have increased incidents. Maternal age at the upper and lower extremes carries a higher risk of GTD. This association is much greater for complete moles, whereas the risk of partial molar pregnancy varies relatively little with age. Moreover, compared with the risk in those aged 15 years or younger, the degree of risk is much greater of women 45 years, 1%, or rather 70% at age 50. A history of prior unsuccessful pregnancies also increases the risk of GTD. For example, previous spontaneous abortion at least doubles the risk of molar pregnancy. More significantly, a personal history of GTD increases the risk of developing a molar gestation in a subsequent pregnancy at least tenfold. The frequency in a subsequent conception is approximately 1%, and most cases mirror the same type of mole as the preceding pregnancy. Furthermore, following two episodes of molar pregnancy, 23% of later conception result in another molar gestation. For this reason, women with a prior history of GTD should undergo first trimester sonographic examination in subsequent pregnancies. 
Familial more pregnancies, however, are rare. Of other risk factors, combination oral contraceptive pill use has been associated with an increased risk of GTD. Specifically, prior COC use approximately doubles the risk, and the longer duration of use also correlates positively with risk. Some epidemiologic characteristics differ markedly between complete and partial MOPs. For example, vitamin A deficiency and low dietary intake of keratin are associated only with increased risk of complete moles. Partial moles have been linked to higher educational levels, smoking, irregular menstrual cycles, and obstetric histories in which only male infants are among the prior leave births. In this picture, you see the classification of gestational trophoblastic disease. High the TD for moles, invasive mole, placental site, trophoblastic tumor, chorea carcinoma, and additionally, epithelioid tumor, which could be benign and malignant. I mean, benign forms of GTD, high the TD form moles. In this picture, you see the schematic presentation of all these forms of GTD. Complete hydrated form mole, partial hydrated form mole, coexistent mole and leaf fetus, it's also possible, invasive mole, destruents, choriocarcinoma with metastasis to lungs, placental site, trophoblastic tumor. Hydrated form mole. Hydrated form mole is characterized by proliferation of the trophoblast, which suggests an advanced normal pregnancy when it fills the uterine cavity. Hydatidiform for moles may be complete classic or incomplete partial. At this picture, you see the incidence of hydatidiform mole in different regions of the world different in North America and Asia. Difference possibly, I'm repeating, related to lower dietary intake of keratin, vitamin A deficiency, and animal fat. More common at reproductive extremes in age less than 20 years or more than 35 years. Risk factors, history of previous GTD, if one previous small 1% chance of recurrence versus 0.1% in general population. If two previous moles, risk of recurrence increases to 16 to 28%, smoking, vitamin A deficiency, and my friend's blood type, A or AB, are at slightly higher risk than those with type B or zero. Characteristics of complete or classic mole. They are present. Marked edema and enlargement of the villi. Disappearance of the villous blood vessels. Proliferation of the trophoblastic lining of the villi. Absence of fetus, cord, or amniotic membrane. Complete moles typically have a diploid carrier type, and 85 to 90 percent of cases are 46. The chromosomes, however, in these pregnancies are entirely of paternal origin, and thus. The diploid set is described as deandric. 
Specifically, complete molds are formed by androgenesis, in which the ovum is fertilized by a haploid sperm that then duplicates its own chromosomes after meiosis. The ovum fails to contribute chromosomes. Most of these moles are 46XX, but dispermic fertilization of a single ovum, that is simultaneous fertilization but two sperm, can produce a 46XY carrier type. Clinically, uterine size usually larger than expected. A higher incidence of postmolar complications, such as gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, hyperemesis, thickal uterine cysts, and hyperthyroidism. At this picture, you see the presentation of complete hydatidiform mole. These moles, you already know, classifically have swollen enlarged villi, some of which show cistern formation, that is central cavitation within the large villi, black asterisk. Seen diffusely throughout the placenta, these villus changes create the vesicles noted grossly in complete moles. At this picture, you see normal term placenta showing smaller, non edematous villi and the absence of trophoblastic proliferation. At this picture, the, the naked eye presentation of complete mole. Placental cells proliferate abnormally. There is a stromal edema, vesicles from that look like grapes. Partial hydatidiform mole. These moles differ from complete hydatidiform moles clinically, genetically, and histologically. The degree and extent of trophoblastic proliferation and villus edema are decreased compared with those of complete moles. Moreover, most partial moles contain fetal tissue and amnion in addition to placental tissue. As a result, patients with partial moles typically present with signs and symptoms of an incomplete or missed abortion. It, it, it's a typical mistake in the diagnosis of partial hydatidiform mole. Characteristics of incomplete or partial mole. Marked swelling of the villi with atrophic trophoblastic cells. Presence of normal villi. Presence of fetus, cord, and amniotic, amniotic membrane. Abnormal carrier type, usually triploidy or trisomy. 69XXX or 69XXY. The chromosomes are derived from a duplicated paternal set and a haploid ovum. Uterine size usually smaller than expected because trophoblastic proliferation is slight and only focal. Uterine enlargement in excess of gestational age is uncommon. Postmolar GTD less common. Preeclampsia, thickal uterine cysts, hyperthyroidism, or other dramatic clinical features 
Aria. Pre-evacuation beta HCG levels are typically much lower than those of complete moles and often do not exceed 100,000 milli international unit per milliliter. For this reason, partial moles are often not identified until after a histologic review of a curative specimen. At this picture, you see the presentation of partial mole. Together, the placental tumor and the fetus, grape-like structures and the fetus. At this picture, you see the formation of genetic presentation of both complete and the partial mole. I am answering your uh, question, Ashwini. You see it at the picture. Do you understand, Ashwini? X, X, Y, X, X, X. Only. Now, at this table, there are uh, summarized the characteristics of complete and the partial mole. Karyotype in complete mole is diploid, usually 46XX or really 46XY. In partial triploid, 69XXX or 69XXY. Swelling of chorionic villi diffuse in complete and focal in partial mole. Trophoblastic hyperplasia is diffuse in complete and the focal in partial mole. Embryonic tissue is absent in complete mole and absent in partial mole. HCG mostly more than one. 100,000 milli international unit per milliliter. In partial, mostly less. Trophoblastic sequel in about 50 to 20 percent of cases. In partial, less than in 5 percent. Thickal uterine cysts up to 25 incomplete and rare in partial. Medical complications up to 25% in complete and rare in partial. Uterine size 550% larger for datas. In partial, small for datas. Clinical manifestation of high form mole. Typical first symptom of this disease is vaginal bleeding, usually occurring in the first trimester, 97% of cases, and the posthemorrhagic anemia. The uterus is often larger than expected in terms of the last menstrual period. Pelvic pain is typically present. Mostly, there is not severe, dull, or pulling pain in the lower part of abdomen. Hyperemesis gravidarum, nausea and vomiting occur in about one third of patients. Thickal uterine cysts and abdominal pain secondary to thickal uterine cysts is found in. 15% of patients because of the molar pregnancy produces excessive HCG, which stimulates excessive growth of the ovaries. Hyperthyroidism caused by bleeding of the HCG molecule with elevated levels of HCG. 
to the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor site and by hyperfunction of the thyroid glands. Preeclampsia in the early second trimester should raise high suspicion of a molar pregnancy. Vaginal passage of hydropic vesicles is possible. Partial mole usually presented as incomplete or missed abortion. Diagnosis. It's necessary to evaluate for coexisting condi uh, conditions. Uh, evaluation includes physical examination, ultrasound, chemistry, serum beta HCG, CBC, coagulation profile, thyroid function, blood type, chest radiography. In reproductive age women with vaginal bleeding, diagnosis may include gynecologic causes of bleeding and complications of first trimester pregnancy. The trophoblast of molar pregnancies produces better HCG and elevated hormone levels reflect their proliferation. Accordingly, initial urine or serum beta HCG measurement and the transvaginal sonography are inavailable in guiding evaluation. Invaluable, sorry, in guiding evaluation. Because of this, first trimester diagnosis of hydrotidiform mole is now common. Although better HCG levels are helpful, the diagnosis of molar pregnancy is more frequently found sonographically. Most first trimester complete moles demonstrate a complex echogenic intrauterine mass containing many small cystic spaces, snowstorm which reflects swollen hydrionic villi, fetal tissue and amnionic sac are absent. In contrast, sonographic features of a partial molar pregnancy include a thickened hydropic placenta with a concomitant fetus. In this picture, you see the ultrasound presentation of snowstorm incomplete mole. Sonogram showing homogeneous intrauterine echoes without a gestational sac or fetal parts. In this picture you see transverse sonographic view of a uterus with a complete hydatidi for mole 2. The classic snowstorm also appearance is created by multiple placental vesicles. The mole completely fills with the uterine cavity and the calipers are placed at on the outer uterine borders. Transvaginal sonogram of multiple thickal uterine cyst with one ovary of a woman with a complete molar pregnancy. Bilateral, multiple, simple cysts are characteristic findings. Histopathology. Complete moles generally have two prominent features, trophoblastic proliferation and the hydropic villi. In gestations younger than 10 weeks, however, hydropic villi may not be apparent and the molar stroma, stroma may still be vascular. As a result, identification of early complete moles must rely on more subtle histologic abnormalities, 
supplemented by immunohistochemical and molecular diagnostic techniques. Partial moles are optimally diagnosed when three or four major diagnostic criteria are demonstrated. First, two populations of villi. Second, enlarged irregular dysmorphic villi with trophoblast inclusions. Third, enlarged cavitated villi more than three to four millimeters. Fourth, syncytiotrophoblast hyperplasia atypia. High form mole treatment. Suction curettage is the primary tool for evacuating a molar even when the uterus has enlarged beyond the size expected for a 20 week pregnancy. Newly parous women are not given prostanoids to ripen the cervix since these drugs can induce uterine contraction and they might increase the risk of trophoblastic embolization to the pulmonary vasculature. Suction curettage has almost eliminated the need for hysterectomy which was commonly used before suction was available. Suction curettage is used in conjunction with intravenous oxytocin. In rhesus negative, anti rhesus immunoglobulin is given. Symptomatic thickal uterine ovarian cysts are an unusual finding and the tend to regress after molar evacuation. In extreme cases, this may be aspirated, but orphorectomy is not performed except when torsion leads to extreme ovarian infarction. Follow-up care molar pregnancy. 80% of patients cured by evacuation. Follow better HCG levels every two weeks until three consecutive tests negative. Then monthly better HCG every month for six to 12 months. More than half of patients will have complete regression of beta HCG to normal within two months of evacuation. Avoid pregnancy for at least six months after first normal beta HCG, oral contraceptive pills is preferable. Subsequent pregnancy, it's necessary to send placenta for pathology for the prophylaxis of possible mistakes and missed recidive of gestational trophoblastic disease. It's also necessary to check beta HCG six weeks postpartum. Prognosis. Complete mole has the later latent risk of local invasion or metastasis. The higher risk factors include beta HCG more than 100,000 international units per liter. Uterine size is more than 20 weeks size. The luteinizing cyst is more than 6 centimeters. If more than 40 years old, the risk of invasion and metastasis may be 37%. If more than 50 years old, the risk of invasion and metastasis may be 56. Repeated mole. The morbidity of invasion and metastasis increased three to four times. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. 
My friends, please again write your names at the chat. At the chat. Алло. Да, Елена Okay, good, my friends. Now, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, malignant gestational trophoblastic disease. Now, my friends, do you hear me? See presentation? Do you hear me, my friends? Yes, that's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There are different forms of malignant gesta gestational trophoblastic disease. There is persistent invasive mole, Choriocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, and epithelioid tumor. Criteria of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. At least one of the following. Better HCG plateau or increase of more than 10% for more than three values for more than two weeks. Thirst seventh and the 14th days. Better HCG persistent six months after molar evacuation. Histopathologic diagnosis of horio carcinoma. Presence of metastatic disease. Invasive mole. What is typical for this pathology? Myometrial invasion by hydatidiform mole, formerly known as chorioadenoma destruens. One in 15,000 pregnancies is in its incidence. From 10 to 7 percent of hydatidiform moles will progress to invasive moles. This common manifestation of DTN is characterized by whole chorionic villi that accompany excessive trophoblastic overgrowth and invasion. These tissues penetrate deep into the myometrium, sometimes to involve the peritoneum, adjacent parametriums, or vaginal vaults. Such moles are locally invasive, but generally lack the pronounced tendency to develop widespread metastasis, typical for choriocarcinoma. Invasive moles originate almost exclusively from a complete or a partial hydatidiform mole. At this picture, you see the presentation of invasive mole. An invasive mole contains whole villi that invade locally. The arrow marks one virus invading deeply into the adjacent myometrium. Choriocarcinoma. It is the most aggressive type of DTN characterized by abnormal trophoblastic hyperplasia, absence of chorionic villi. It's very important that choriocarcinoma has direct invasion of myometrium, most often develops from a complete hydatidiform mole. Vascular spread to distant size, mostly to lungs, brain, liver, pelvis, and the vagina, spleen, intestines, and the kidney. May come from any type of pregnancy. 
about 25% follow abortion or tubal pregnancy. 25 with term gestation. 50% from high dotted form, most mostly complete. 2 to 3% of most progress to chorio carcinoma. Incidence of chorio carcinoma is 1 in 40,000 pregnancies. At this picture, you see naked eye presentation of chorio carcinoma. Microscopical presentation is at this picture. Chorea carcinoma is a biphasic tumor characterized by intermediate trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast asteric. Intimately admixed with multinucleate syncytia trophoblast. Chorea carcinoma is a vascular tumor typically with prominent hemorrhage as evidenced by the abundant blood in the background. Placental site trophoblastic tumor originate from intermediate cytotrophoblast cells. Secrete human placental lactogen. Beta HCG often normal. Less vascular invasion Necrosis and the hemorrhage than adenocarcinoma is typical for placental site trophoblastic tumor. Lymphatic spread is common in this pathology. Arise months two years after term pregnancy, but can occur after spontaneous abortion or molar pregnancy. At this picture, you see the presentation of placental site trophoblastic tumor. Most common symptom of placental site trophoblastic tumor is vaginal bleeding, similar to other representatives of gestational trophoblastic disease tend to remain in uterus. Dissemination is late. Produces lower levels of beta-HCG compared to other GTN. Produces high levels of placental lactogen. It's pathognomonic for placental site trophoblastic tumor. It's typically resistant to chemotherapy. Necessity of surgical treatment is typical. Epithelioid trophoblastic tumor. Epithelioid trophoblastic tumor develops from neoplastic transformation of chorionic type intermediate trophoblast. Microscopically, this tumor resembles PSTT, but the cells are smaller and they display less nuclear pleomorphism. Grossly, epithelioid trophoblastic tumor grows in a nodular fashion rather than the infiltrative pattern of PSTT. Hysterectomy is again the primary treatment due to presumed chemo resistance. And since the diagnosis is usually confirmed, in advanced by endometrial biopsy. More than one third of patients will present with metastatic disease and demonstrable chemo resistance to multi agent therapy, which pretends a poor prognosis. Signs and symptoms of GTN. Just a moment, my friends.
Continued uterine bleeding, uterine perforation, enlarged irregular uterus, Just a moment, my friends, there are problems. Enlarged irregular uterus, persistent bilateral ovarian enlargement from metastatic lesions, abdominal pain, hemoptysis, melina, increased intracranial pressure, headaches, seizures, hemiplegia, dyspnea, cough, chest pain, according to the location of metastasis. Abdominal tenderness, if liver or gastrointestinal metastasis have occurred. Abdominal gutting and rebound tenderness if a hematoperitoneum has occurred due to bleeding from an abdominal metastasis. Bleeding from a metastasis could also result in signs and symptoms of hemorrhagic shock. Neurolo neurologic deficitis from lethargy to coma can be accounted if brain metastasis has occurred. Diagnosis by manual examination reveals Subinvolution of the uterus, unilateral or bilateral enlarged ovaries may be palpable through lateral fornitus. Metastasis to the lower genital tract present as purple to blue-black papules or nodules. You see them at the picture. These are extremely vascular and might bleed profusely if biopsied. Increase or plateau in beta HCG after molar pregnancy is a sign of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. Pathologic diagnosis by DNC or biopsy of metastatic lesions. But my friends, warning, pay attention for it. Biopsy of metastatic lesions can result in massive hemorrhage. Be very attentive for it and try to avoid it. Base your diagnosis only on the serum levels of beta HCG and non invasive procedures such as chest x ray, computer tomography of abdomen and pelvis, plus computer tomography, or MRI of brain. And this picture, you see cannonball shadows in the left apical and the mid region of the lung with pleural effusion in choriocarcinoma. And this picture, chest radiography also demonstrate widespread metastatic lesions. Computed tomography scan of metastatic disease to the lung is at this picture. At this picture, you see autopsy specimen shows multiple hemorrhagic hepatic metastasis, very dangerous situation. Classification and staging of GTD. FIGO staging describes anatomic distribution of disease. World Health Organization scoring index, index describes prognosis of resistance for chemotherapy. FIGO staging. Stage 1, disease confined to the uterus. Stage 2. Disease extends outside the uterus, but limited to genital structures. Adnexa, vagina, and broad ligament. Stage 3. 
Disease extends to the lungs with or without genital tract involvement. Stage four, disease involves any other metastatic sites. At this picture, you see the illustration of World Health Organization scoring system for GTD. Prognostic score index includes the information about age of the patient, antecedent pregnancy, pregnancy to treatment interval in months, pretreatment HCG, largest tumor size, including uterus, site of metastasis, number of metastases, previous failed chemotherapy. Low risk, FIGO score six or less, FIGO stage one, two, and three. Drug schedules, single agent chemotherapy. Most commonly used regimens are methotrexate, folinic acid, repeat in two weeks previous course of treatment. Single agent therapy for non-metastatic stage one or lower risk metastatic stage two and three with score less than seven leads to survival rates about 100%. Chemotherapy continued until better HCG values normal and then two, three cycles beyond. Cure rates is about 100, but 30 to 50 percent will be developed resistant to first agent. Insignificant elevation of HCG on new metastasis switch to multi-agent. From 85 to 90% cure it with initial regimen. Less than 5% will require hysterectomy for cure. Treatment of high risk GTD. Stage one, two, three, with FIGO score 7 or greater or stage 4. Disease refractory to single agent chemotherapy. Primary intensive combination chemotherapy and selective use of radiation and surgery. You see typical regimens for the treatment of high risk GTD. High risk metastatic GTD stage four, stage two, three with score more than seven. Combination chemotherapy. You see the three typical combinations of chemotherapy at this slide. It's necessary to say that in our country, the prescription of chemotherapy is a responsibility of not gynecologists, of oncologists and chemotherapeutists. The clinical effect is evaluated based on the level of beta HCG, which must be defined in the lower risk group, in the zero before treatment and the fourth days, then before each course of chemotherapy. In the high-risk group, in the zero before therapy, seventh and the 14th days. Follow-up. Titus of HCG every two weeks for three months. Then monthly for three months, then every six months. Frequent pelvic examination, chest radiograph, or regular intervals.
Contraception usually birth control pills for a minimum of one year. Indications for hysterectomy, very important item. Lesions confined to the uterus in women aged more than 35 years, not desiring of fertility. Placental cytrophoblastic tumor, which is resistant for, resistant for chemotherapy. Intractable vaginal bleeding. Localized uterine lesion resistant, lesion resistant to chemotherapy. Accidental uterine perforation during uterine curettage. Radiotherapy. In combination with chemotherapy is clearly indicated for the primary management of patients with brain metastasis. Placental site trophoblastic and epithelioid trophoblastic tumors therapy. Mostly it is hysterectomy, you already know. Chemotherapy for metastatic disease or non-metastatic disease with poor prognosis. For example, interval from index pregnancy more than two years, deep myometrial invasion, tumor necrosis, mitotic count more than 6% per, uh, per 10 high power pills, survival rates in these patients about 100 for non metastatic disease and from 50 to 6% for metastatic disease. Follow-up care. After completion of chemotherapy, follow serial HCG every two weeks for three months, then monthly for one year. Physical examination every six to 12 months and the imaging is indicated. Reproductive performance. Most women resume normal ovarian function. Women who undergo chemotherapy, I advise not to conceive for one year after completion of treatment. No increased risk of stillbirths, abortions, congenital abnormalities, prematurity, or major obstetric complications, fortunately. False positive serum HCG, phantom HCG syndrome, phantom chorea carcinoma. Three to 4% of healthy individuals, my friends, have human anti-mouse antibodies that can mimic HCG immunoreactivity. To verify it necessary to control urine HCG, which should be negative, should not show parallel decrease with serial dilution, and necessary to test these patients at national beta HCG reference laboratories. Thank you for your attention, my friends. Today we shall finish and my friends, I want to underline that tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, there will be days for the work in the uh, simulation center. Uh, tomorrow it will be, you are welcome, my friends. Tomorrow it will be working day in simulation center for group C. Uh, my friends, group C, be attentive. You must come to simulation center uh, at 10 o'clock, my friends, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'll separate you into two subgroups. Uh, subgroup A, there are Aniket, Sakshi, Albert, Arif, Tava, Shivani, Ashwini, uh, and Emmanuel. And Emmanuel, you eight, you eight. Come to the simulation center with the second shoes. Uh, also, it necessary to read about before the uh, class. It necessary to read about. Come back to the topic 
uh, endometrial polyps and the um, ectopic pregnancy, tubal pregnancy, because I will train your skills in the removal of uh, fallopian tube and the removal of polyp. Uh, also, my friends, uh, it's for it's for such students as all of them are in subgroup. Uh, no, Ashwini is sun group subgroup first. Uh, Ashwini, Sidhi, uh, Lavina, Ella, Ella Raja, please also bring uh, gloves. Uh, because of you have missed uh, first uh, simulation center class and it's necessary to train uh, inspection of uh, gynecological patient uh, bring also gloves and uh, be ready to demonstrate your skills in the, this uh, in this work uh, uh, what about group d i'll answer all your questions uh, tomorrow tomorrow another group group d uh, it will be a uh, self-study uh, and your topic will be uh, methods of contraception. It will be the, um, it will be the uh, presentation for you on uh, SDO chat platform and you can use it and also, of course, you can use your uh, books and uh, prepare this topic because uh, it's one of questions in uh, list of uh, examination questions uh, the uh, detailized uh, information about the work uh, of group d the day after tomorrow in stimulation center ask your teacher please uh, my friends group c have you any questions first subgroup will come to simulation center at 10 o'clock in the morning subgroup d come uh, 11 and a half 11 and a half subgroup uh, two from group c second shoes uh, some of you bring uh, uh, gloves others bring your knowledge only uh, now my friends what about group c uh, the discussion uh, of uh, clinical cases for gestational trophoblastic uh, disease will be uh, on uh, thursday on thursday it will be the day for um, uh, self-preparation self-study but also we shall discuss these cases at uh, discord platform because now i must be uh, in uh, main building in minion square uh, it will be the meeting for us there uh, and i'll be uh, and i'll be busy uh, now uh, have you any questions my friends have you any questions i mean the organization of uh, tomorrow class Albert, okay, good for you. Explain uh, your colleagues if uh, they have any problems. Will there be cases? Will there be cases for exam? I don't understand. You have the list of questions for exam. Cases for exam. What do you mean? Exam questions are theoretical questions. Tomorrow it will be training of uh, practical skills, my friends. Clinical cases like we discuss in Discord. No, no, my friends, they will be only theoretical. I believe they will be only theoretical questions. Only theoretical questions. Uh, no questions, my friends. Write your names now. Goodbye, Group C. See you tomorrow at uh, Simulation Center and uh, at Discord platform the day after tomorrow. No questions, my friends. No, write your names now and goodbye. And goodbye.